This is even what old California is a little like. This exactly. It's that Mediterranean, it's Spanish, Spanish, Spanish colonial. Mexico. You feel Mexico? I, I, when I look down at the thing, when I look down at the courtyard, I yeah. think I've been in any Latin to Mexico uh, to, and to, and, to and, Cuba. And old, old, in, in, in uh, old Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. uh, no, old San Juan. Juan is lovely. Just like, I mean, yes. just like this. It's a gorgeous hotel. All right, we ready, Lenny? Okay. Well, welcome back to South Florida. Thank you. I've had some lovely experiences here. I've made uh, two full-length movies. Uh, the first was On an Island with You, and the next was uh, Easy to Love. And um, then I came back to Cypress Gardens, uh, which is, I guess, it, it's uh, it's on the Gulf, isn't it? It's, it's it, and, the, and all those lakes, they've got all these lakes, and it, it, that was for uh, a special that I produced. Had a 52 share. Will we ever know that kind of rating again? Uh, it, of course, it, it meant that 52% of the people that had television sets were watching August 8th, 1960, and it uh, happened to be my birthday. And, uh, oh, I just had the best old big party and uh, all the executives at NBC. It was the first television special shot live, on location, in color. And I've given it to uh, UCLA as an artifact. They restored it for me. And because I put it in a closet someplace, I never thought it would have any value. And uh, it's in their archives now. And uh, Florida has a, golly, if the governor of Florida wanted me to start that special with, where does the sunshine as good, as good as in Hollywood, in Florida? And I said, Gosh, you want me to sing a song about Florida and the sunshine and say it's as good as Hollywood? They won't let me come back home to the Chamber of Commerce if I do that. And he said, do it for me. And I said, okay. I can't say no to a governor. And that's how we started the, the special. What recollections do you have about Easy to Love and you shot it here, Van Johnson. It was a, it's a classic movie. What recollections do you have about that movie? I was pregnant. <laughs> and you had this big pool to swim and in? <laughs> I, I had to learn to water ski for that, for that picture. And I would never water skied before. And I had a serious talk with the producer. And I said, it was Joe Pasternak. I did, I did about seven movies with Joe and he he was wonderful. He's the one that brought Melchior, uh, Lawrence Melchior and Helen Traubel and Mario Lanza to the screen. He had a, a he had a big passion for for classy music, classical classy music. And uh, his pictures were very successful. I was in several. And I said, Joe I'm pregnant, and I know it's the third time I've done this to you in a movie, but we're going to have to change the schedule around completely or I won't be able to do the movie at all. And he said, you know something, I don't appreciate this. He said, if this happens one more time, that husband of yours is barred from the lot. And I said, Joe, it doesn't happen on the lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've got terrible news for you. But what happened is... The sensible thing would have been to go home, but they had a problem with my pictures. They didn't have a replacement. I mean, if Meryl Streep doesn't want to make a movie, Michelle Pfeiffer is waiting eagerly to fill those shoes. Uh, they didn't have another swimmer, and they had accumulated all these 58 of the best water skiers in the world. They've in Israel, they found them in Canada, they found them in Australia, they'd gotten them all together and everybody's ready to go. And you can't say no. I could never say no to MGM. And, and uh, so I start the movie and now we know we have to move all the swimming suit sequences up to the beginning because around five and a half months um, a nice tight swimsuit doesn't work somehow, and uh, that's what the movies took. 
five and a half, six months to do. It must be, it must have been great to feel irreplaceable. <laughs> yes, it was, but it put the pressure on me. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, the baby I lost was this time for keeps, ironically, up in Mackinac Island. Um, my first son was born during Neptune's daughter. Then there was Pagan Love Song with my second son all the way through, and then Susie, my daughter, was easy to love. And um, we got through it. And Busby Berkeley did those swimming numbers. And when I said to Buzz, I can't do the dive from the swing on the helicopter, Buzz, because I'm going to have a baby. And he said, I'm really not interested in your domestic problems. And I said, having a baby is a little more than a domestic problem. And you did the scene. But I did it. I saw it. I did it. And, um, you know, I felt, I felt somehow that little baby was going to get born. And my Susie, when she had loaded, when she left college and she had a, a scholarship to the academy in New York, and she's in a U-Haul trailer and she parks it. She's got all her furniture and she's got a girlfriend that's sound asleep next to her. And she's driving to New York. And she calls me from a phone booth and says, you know, Mom, I think I'm doing something kind of stupid driving this truck across with all my furniture and everything. And she said, I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm panicking a little. I said, honey, wait a minute. I've never told you how you started out in life. Believe me, you're indestructible. <laughs> you could do anything because if you could get through that pregnancy with me, and get, get that movie made, and we did, and uh, she is strong, and she's doing a work that takes all the strength she can get, and I'm very proud of her. But, and I'm glad I didn't say no, because I, I never felt so pretty as I did when I was pregnant. What do you remember about this hotel and about the swimming pool here, which I understand you consider it, um, it's one of your favorite pools. It is my favorite pool because it's 150 meters long and uh, having spent my life in swimming pools turning turning you get in this pool and you when you do five laps in it you you've had a good swim and the first thing I did when I got here last night off the airplane was get right into that water and it was wonderful because it began to rain and uh, I was swimming backstroke and I thought what where are you, Gene Kelly? You, you sang in the rain, but you don't know what it's like to swim in the rain. <laughs> Back then, they don't make movies like that anymore. Now, of course, you're here um, because uh, Turner Classic Movies is going on dynamic cable vision. Um, it's wonderful that they're airing 24 hours a day, some of the most wonderful, greatest movies ever made. How do you feel about that, that they keep them alive? What, a, what an amazing, surprising turn of events that Turner would buy this incredible library of classic movies. And instead of having them disappear from our consciousness and make us think that movies are only about blowing things up and special effects and little dolls that talk, that there were real people and we can really study what a movie star was all about. When you see the young Clark Gable in Mutiny on the Bounty, and then you see the Clark Gable that I did my first screen test with in Gone with the Wind, and you realize what captivating personalities we had in the movies in those days. And uh, nobody had to invent them. They, they were the real thing. And those those tycoons that ran the five studios, the five big tycoons that really were very creative. They loved movies so much. They, they had come from Europe as children and, and uh, uh, had to learn the language and, and made their way. Uh, when I saw 
Kazan's America, America. I knew what L.B. Mayer went through and what, what most of them. And they loved the movies and they loved Hollywood and they loved keeping it in a state of magic. And that magic is all available to us now. 400 movies a day are shown on, on Turner's classic movie cable station. And um, if people don't have it, they're really missing a lot because uh, I'll find myself suddenly absolutely captivated by Carol Lombard and, and uh, John Barrymore, people we never had a chance to see. Uh, what, what really was about Jean Harlow that created the mythic Marilyn Monroe, the blonde bombshell? What made that genre happen? And uh, these new generations coming up are getting to know all of us because there are no more musicals. And they got, they've got musicals to see and see what that art form was like and the hard work that went into all those rehearsals and getting it done to perfection. You were the idol of American women. We all wanted to have a body like you. Oh, well, the body that I had was from swimming. Uh, I looked at, I went to the Swimming Hall of Fame. I did a, a, a mistress of ceremonies for one of their uh, honorary uh, events. And uh, I looked at those kids that were on their way to Barcelona when they were all there. And uh, I thought, swimming makes these perfect bodies. Better than any gym where you go and pump iron. Arnold is amazing, and I'm, I'm really delighted that he got everybody into gymnasiums. But those are hot, sweaty places in a swimming pool where you're getting long, smooth, perfect muscles that you have all your life. You don't have to pump anything to get them. You just need to get in the pool as often as possible. And uh, golly, the best thing about swimming as a sport is you sweat, but you, nobody knows it. You smell like an angel. You know, and I, it, it just seems to me, and I watched the Olympics in Atlanta this summer, and uh, my synchronized swimmers won. And uh, that I was doing something that I enjoyed thoroughly, which was swimming in the movies, was giving birth to a sport. Because those girls that are the coaches and the mothers of those champions now were the girls that got together and formed little groups and called themselves the Santa Rosa Aqua Maids or the Aqua Nuts or all the, that's why they still have all these crazy names because those were groups that formed their own little team because they looked at me 40 feet high on the screen and said that's what I want to do I don't want to swim fast I want to swim pretty and they didn't know they were going to get awfully strong strong enough to swim fast because it's a very demanding sport you qualified for the U.S. Olympic team in 1940, but it never happened. Now, especially this summer, did you look at the Olympics and think, oh, I could have gone for the gold in... In 84, when the Olympics were in Los Angeles, uh, I was married to Fernando Lamas, and he passed away in 1982. And I had been retired thinking there's nothing dumber than a middle-aged mermaid. So that's something you do, and you move on to something else. That's when I got into business, and uh, the swimming pool business, and now the swimsuit business. But the thing that happened is ABC called me and said, would you come and tell us about the history of synchronized swimming? And we have film clips of you the beginning, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's birthing, which was because with Harry James playing the music by the side of the pool and Xavier Cougat at the other end in Bathing Beauty, those strokes had to change from the long, smooth strokes that I had done into jazz. And it was synchronized swimming. And that's exactly the time Bathing Beauty came out in 1944, 
45, we made it in 44. In 1946 was the first synchronized swimming meet. And it was a direct result of girls saying, I want to do that. I want to do that. And they perfected it. And they made it like figure skating. They had to make moves that could be graded, like diving and the point system. And when I saw them in 84, as I sat in those stands and I watched it for the first time, and it was called a demonstration sport at that time, which means they were thinking if it has enough of a following, it'll stay in the Olympics. And I had everything crossed, hoping it could stay. And when those stands filled up, and synchronized swimming and, and gymnastics were the total sellout months before any other sport, I knew it was in, because the box office tells the story. And then when they put the eight-girl team in in the Atlanta Olympics, then you saw the sport at its best, where every toe and every fingernail does exactly the same thing as the girl next to her. If, Sorry, I gotta change. Okay. 